Today we're unboxing Logitech's completely redesigned G29, the Logitech G923. And by completely redesigned, I mean they painted the dial black. Just kidding, there are a few pretty substantial upgrades, but we'll talk about those soon. Here we have the G923. The box features nothing crazy, a few graphics showing how it works, images of the wheel itself, but nothing out of the ordinary. Opening the box up, the first thing you see are some papers which show where to plug everything in as well as a bunch of other warnings and whatnot. Inside the box itself, everything is tightly tucked in as you can see. The box isn't too big, so I'm really impressed as to how they managed to fit everything in here. Including you get the power supply, which we'll take a deeper look into soon, a pretty cool Logitech sticker, some play seat advertisement, and some other warnings. The pedals themselves were tightly packed in, and I struggled taking them out at first. Both the wheel and the pedals come wrapped in plastic and arrived in one piece. So now that everything's out of the box, let's take a more in-depth look at what's included. Starting off with the part that nobody cares about, you receive a small pamphlet advertising all of Logitech's other gaming products, a sticker, and a bunch of other paper that nobody will ever read. The power supply comes wrapped in plastic, and I believe this is the same one that comes with the previous models. There's nothing too interesting to talk about here. Moving on to the pedals, they look identical to the previous ones as well. For a budget wheel, I still think these are pretty good looking. They have metal pedal plates, which glisten under light and give them a more premium feel. The same plastic body is used, although similar to the previous versions, you can tell it's some pretty good quality plastic that won't be flexing around when in game. There are two things that immediately caught my attention. The first is the carpet grip on the back. These are a lot pointier than the previous versions, so much so that I actually poked my finger and I drew like a drop of blood when I was taking them out of the box. The second thing that was immediately noticeable was the resistance on the brake and the clutch pedal. The clutch pedal requires slightly more force to push down compared to the throttle, and the brake pedal gives consistent resistance when applying pressure, unlike the previous model which was light at first and then suddenly very heavy. Now let's move on to the star of the show, the Logitech G923 itself. Removing the plastic, it's incredible how nearly nothing has changed from a design perspective. The wheel features the same buttons, paddle shifters, leather, rim size, and everything. I was disappointed that they didn't bother to update the cheap D-pad, or at least the dial which has never been precise. The wheel rim still does however provide the same good quality leather, which I've always been a fan of. The wheelbase is exactly the same as well, with the only difference being that this one has true force printed on its side. Overall, while the wheel hasn't substantially changed from a design perspective, it's still a pretty good looking wheel. At $400 however, the updates in the force feedback and the pedals will really have to show for me to be able to recommend it. As I mentioned, I will be testing out this wheel in the next few days and releasing an absolute banger of a review for it, so if you're interested, make sure to subscribe. But anyway, this has been my unboxing and first impressions on the Logitech G2 on the Logitech G923, a wheel which will have a lot to prove in the upcoming days. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you considering this wheel, and are you disappointed that it looks nearly identical to the G29? With all that being said, thank you all for watching, stay safe, and have a fantastic rest of your day.